Good morning. Welcome to Fiber Town, episode 171. Where are my show notes? Here they are. I want to make sure that I have them in front of me. I have a lot to share with you guys today. So welcome to my kitchen. My name is Emily, Chain of Fools on Ravelry and Fiber Town with an RE on Instagram. I've probably said those things now 171 times to you at least, and I'm glad to be back. I was sick yesterday, yesterday, yesterday week. I was sick last week and <clears throat> still not quite 100%, but my voice is better, so I wanted to sit down and on this Monday, the day before the election, moment of silence, and uh, yeah, show you what has been helping to keep me sane in this time of craziness. So I have for you... Um, what do I have for you today? I have a winner to announce. In fact, I haven't drawn that winner. I may have to do that live. I have our next knit along to talk about. I have a code, a coupon code for you. I have an FO. I have lots of works in progress. I have lots of spinning and wooly things, wool preparation and yeah. I have some weaving. I have a massive de stash that I'm going to talk about here, which I've struggled. I, I wasn't sure if I would, but I do want to show you some things I'm de stashing. And I have a fiber town on the road, which is super exciting. So, first of all, let me say thank you <coughs> on behalf of me and Virgine um, Mosaic Madness. She, um, she was our fiber town on the road person last time, and you guys loved her. <laughs> so did I. Um, so yeah, she's she's been in touch and she's very happy with the response. And who knows, maybe she would put together a podcast of her own someday. I would love that. And I would subscribe right away. And thank you if you are a new subscriber or you have pushed the like button on YouTube. I really appreciate that. And if you have been in touch on the Rav, um, on the Rav, <laughs> Or on YouTube, thank you so much for getting in touch. I've been very bad lately about getting back to people. It's just been crazy. But I've been reading everything, and I have plans to sit down and go through the backlog of stuff. So, all right. So, as you know, oh, shoot, I didn't bring it. Oh, all right, I'm going to have to show you an Instagram picture. As you know, I have been sick. And I will say that my <clears throat> one thing that really was a comfort during that time was my Tinctoria cowl. And if you have purchased this, um, thank you so much. Here it is. This is just cozy. It's, you know, hand dyed by Teasel. Um, lined cowl, super cozy. And I wore that thing the whole time I was sick. I need to wash it now because germs. At any rate, I wanted to say that I am offering a coupon code for viewers, and in fact, I should have done this already, but, you know, things have happened. So the coupon code is FTTINCTORIA. That's all lowercase. <clears throat> and that will reduce the price of the cowl from 4 to $3 on Ravelry. And I'll probably keep this going through, um, through Thanksgiving. So um, if you'd like to go ahead and get one of those for yourself or a friend, that would be wonderful and it would support the podcast and I thank you in advance. Um, okay, so we have finished the magic along. Lots of people participated in that. That was the October, the October cowl. Pardon me if I'm very distracted. The dog has chosen this time to come and knock on the door to get out. And what will happen if I go and let her out? no doubt, is that she will <clears throat> stand there like she doesn't know why I've gotten up and interrupted what I'm doing um, to open the door and what is up with that. And then I will close the door and then she will knock again and I will open it and she'll look at me and who knows, maybe she'll go out that time. <sighs> All right, I'm going to ask Siri to pick a number between two and, no, don't even come up to me. <laughs> she knows she's going to scratch me. Uh, to say, why are you ignoring me? Siri, pick a number between 2 and 107. I'm sorry. Okay, Siri can't understand me. Let's try again. Siri, pick a number between 2 and 107. I'm sorry. Okay, Siri is not cooperating. So I will go to random.org. <clears throat> Unbelievable. What's going on? 
So the winner, um, the winner of the of the magic along is going to win this, which is, in my opinion, the best pom pom issue ever. All right, let's try random.org. <clears throat> oh my goodness! Gave us a very early number number six, which is middle aged Pearl. Marianne, I know Marianne. She's awesome. Um, and you know what? She won a prize. Um, she won September's prize too. Middle aged Pearl, you have got to win, like enter the lottery or something. And she got some hand spun and she knitted up into adorable. Um, is it a hat and mitt set? I know there were mitts involved. Anyway, middle aged Pearl, random picked you again. So you're a lucky, lucky lady. <coughs> Excuse me. The winner of the Comfort Along, which is going to go for November and December, will win a skein of hand spun to be decided. Because I am planning a hand spun winter cal. Um, I just want to hunker down and knit with my hand spun because it's overtaking my stash, which is not a bad problem. Um, but yeah, I want to use some of it up. Okay. My one FO this week is the Dahlia dress. It's a sew, and I'm wearing it, and this is it. <laughs> this was a muslin that I made um, because I wanted to use this fabric, which is a lovely wool plaid. So before I cut into this, <clears throat> I wanted to try, you know, try to make a dress for fit. So I had this very inexpensive flannel. There's my invisible zip. You can see the, the little tab of it. And I have decided I will not be making this dress um, anytime soon again. I find it very Mad Men. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. You can come up while I talk about my sewing. Oh, by the way, she's wearing her pretty, pretty bandana. Yes, this is Alice, if you've not met her before. Um, so yeah, I find it very Mad Men, and while I do appreciate that look, um, I'm not one for, you know, wearing pumps along with it. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, also because this is a very, it's a quite a fiddly sew, and I don't like the fit in some places. It needs, um, I did line the skirt, and I just sort of went rogue as far as sewing on this a couple times, so I can't completely blame the pattern for fit issues. But it takes more, but what I want to do with that plaid is make another Anna dress. I just love the Anna dress. Um, whereas this is kind of 50s, 60s, um, you know, with the gathers and so forth. All right, you get down. The Anna dress has this modern, a more modern silhouette, which, and it's just cleaner, which suits my aesthetic better. Um, yeah, I still like this. You know, it's, it's nice. I kind of... I like parts of it, but I don't know. It was the first time I did a raglan set in where you really have to ease in the fullness of the sleeves. But yeah, I don't know. Not something I would wear very often. So yeah, so I'm gonna get some nice lining. I lined this with a rayon because I feel like Lately, dresses, especially if I wear them over leggings or tights, they tend to, if I don't wear a slip, I mean, when was the last time you wore a slip? If I don't wear a slip, they do ride, they do like ride up. So yeah, I will be lining, probably fully lining the, wool, the next Anna dress I make. So yeah, that's it for FOs. As far as works in progress, I have some secret knitting. Um, and then I have a finished sock, which I've, it's a no pro monkey. I'm using my knit pro zings from the Wooly Thistle, which I really, really like. And this is out of so so oh gosh. Sokusu. I don't know if it's made anymore. <clears throat> it was a gift from Kate. Hi Kate, hope you're well. Thank you for this beautiful yarn. And yeah. No pro monkeys. My usual 64 stitch count. Look at that. Oh, such a beautiful pattern. Um, my usual toe, my usual riverbed heel. It's got, um, it's got ends that are unwoven in. These are for my mother-in-law. Jealous of my mother-in-law right now. These are lovely. There's the rest of it. It's a very, 
<clears throat> energized yarn. You can see the, can you see that? Those little, almost pigtails. So there's no nylon in this, but it's very tightly spun and plied. Um, my next work in progress <coughs> um, really came about because I was not, I was not feeling my whips, you know, I just wasn't happy with them. Um, I do have the Lovage sweater also on the needles, but man, plain beige stockinette is not doing it for me. So, yeah, I don't know when I'll get back to that. Um, plus the secret knitting was giving me issues. So I cast on something quite random out of my stash. Drumlin Farm yarn. Um, four ounces bulky from the Massachusetts Audubon Society. Um, so yeah, this is from Drumlin Farm in Massachusetts. And it's natural Romney, 100%. And it's spun green, green processed at Green Mountain Spinnery in Putney, Vermont. And it's a wildlife sanctuary. It's an educational place. Oh, wait, there we go. Lincoln, Massachusetts. This is from my soulful stash swap with Heather 01851. Heather. Oh, I miss seeing it right back. I wanted to say hi. Um, so this has been in my stash a while, and I walk by and pet it, and it's as advertised a bulky single, natural colored. I cast on a little mitt. Um, I'm doing cables, and this actually might be a mitten. So yeah, I've started a cable motif on it, and I have all the stitches for the thumb gusset right here. So the next round, I will, I will take care of the thumb gusset. So yeah, cable's just highly satisfying. I needed something like this. I don't know. Something creative. Designing myself. So that's fun. And then the very last thing I have on the needles, pardon my reach, is... I did some sock yarn squares on my blanket. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's see, where are they? I always mark them with a, mar with a little stitch marker. There's hedgehog teacup. Uh, and this is just a little nugget I had left over from my breathing space cardigan. Okay, and this is some hand spun that I did in the class with Maggie Casey at SSK. So, yeah, I find that I pick this up in moments of stress, um, which is interesting. <clears throat> and in this case, the stress was my teenage daughter needing me there while she did homework. Sometimes your presence is all that is required, and I needed to have a calm presence while I was with her. So I knit a few squares on this. And man, they went fast. I was focused. <laughs> um... Yeah, perhaps you know what I'm talking about if you have a teenager or teenage daughter. I love her. Keeps me on my toes. Um, okay, so I believe that's it. Let's talk about wool and spinning. First thing I have here to show you <clears throat> are some hobbledehoy cops. Look at these. This is from my hobbledehoy purchase at Shenandoah this year. And gosh, these are fun. It's funny, you can tell which ones are, these are from Drop Spindles. Let's see. These are from Supported Spindles. And look, I got my trindle out. I've been having fun playing with my spindles. I really love my spindle collection. I hadn't spun on my trindle in ages and ages. Got these scully beads on there. I have some dragonfly ones as well that are a heavier weight. It's a gorgeous machine. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll probably apply like with like, like the pinks together, the yellows together, the oranges together, and it's something to together. Um, so what else have I been doing? I have finished my Lincoln spin. Let me show you that. Goodness, there's so much stuff. So this was a Lincoln fleece I bought <clears throat> at Maryland Sheep and Wool, 2014. I may have to pause and get some hydration here. Okay, let's see. Oh my goodness, why did I not scan these better? So much Lincoln. Um, there we go. I think that's the last of it. 
I have, I ended up keeping a third of this fleece and the rest of it went to some friends. <clears throat> the locks are just, they're just gorgeous. Um, so the very first, I did a lot of playing around with this because I'm not experienced at spinning long wools. And I learned a lot and <clears throat> kind of broke some rules, spinning rules, which I love to do. Um, and I broke prep rules as well. Um, I, I drum carded this, just one pass through the drum carter to open up the locks. Um, and then I basically stripped, um, stripped the bats. And so the fibers are mostly aligned, you know, they're not combed, but they were pretty aligned. <coughs> now, let's see. I made some mistakes, but this was the first one. So this was, this is a lace weight Navajo fly, chain fly, and it is 190 yards, 2.75 ounces. I spun this on my largest ratio, which and I worked as I usually do, sort of supported long draw. So largest ratio, you know, it's, it's, and my take up was not, you know, super fast. So it was getting a lot of twist into the single, hence it's very energized. Um, you know, it was spinning for longer in the drafting, in the drafting zone, it was getting more twist for a longer time, <clears throat> very energized. So skinny, even though it was on the, lar the largest whorl, yeah, very energized. Socks. I'll go for socks. This is a little thicker. <clears throat> I t tried basically the same technique using a very small whorl. And this is a 140 yards. I didn't I didn't weigh it. Still pretty energized, thicker. But you know, not what I wanted. So evolution. So this is, you know, 300 yards right here. I'm gonna make a pair of socks with them. <clears throat> then, there's some more. I finally started getting the yarn I wanted. Um, what I did was I put, I worked on my second smallest ratio, um, but I worked really close to the orifice so that, um, you know, the fiber wasn't getting as much time for twist to go in it before I fed it onto the bobbin. So I basically drafted out the staple is probably about seven inches, six to seven. I drafted the staple length out to, you know, um, halfway. So a six inch staple would become 12 inch. So, you know, the locks are pretty thick. So I was keeping the, um, I was just basically reducing the, the thickness of the lock by half. So I was getting nice, bigger, plumper singles. It wasn't getting as much twist in it. And you can see it's a really nice three ply. <clears throat> and then I, then I did the same technique for, for the last part of it. And you can tell maybe that I went in a gradation color wise here. So the first ones are the lightest, darker. These are not skinny yet, darkest. There we are. Look at those, those are so pretty. Yep, that's my link and spin. I don't know what, I, I didn't, you know, um, I didn't add up the final yardage probably about 800 yards, I'm guessing. <coughs> um, don't know what it'll become, but it's going on the hand sponge shelf. All right, this, the next thing I did was I washed some Romney locks. And these are from Brutus, from my friend Magnolia13. I helped her pick out Brutus um, at Maryland year before last. So what was that, 2015? 
and he's just a lovely weather. Look at these logs. So a lot of Romney around here, you know, it's 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 a breed that does well in humid marshy climates like like we have in the mid-Atlantic. So there's a nice variation of color. Here's another lock. Very pretty. So I get, she sent me, or she actually gave this to me at Rhinebeck, so I get to sample some of Brutus. Um, I also, oh gosh, I guess the other one of these bats fell on the floor. But I started, since I finished my Lincoln, oh, did the match, I started carding my Coopworth Cross from last, this year's Maryland. It's very different from the long wools, but I like variety. <clears throat> And the very last fleece prep and spinning I did was Eloise. Do not jump on my Eloise. Go away. So I ended up with about eight ounces um, after washing and spinning. And so I started with two, uh, 10 and a quarter ounces. That was my portion of Eloise, the fleece-wise fleece that I'm sharing with um, my, <clears throat> my wool buddies. Sarah Pomegranate, the Yarns at Yanhu podcast. Um, Sarah Swensty, who is the host of Fiber Track podcast. And Claire, the host of the New Hampshire Knits podcast. So I separated my portion of Eloise by lock type. I really, there was maybe four different types of locks, but I kept it crimpy and double-coated. And the double-coated had both, um, the outer coat was both sometimes gray and some, like a darker gray, and sometimes it was a buff color. I think maybe musket is what we're using here as the term. That's the closest of the Shetland colors I can think of. <clears throat> this is the fleece, the, um, the shine on Eloise. Um, this is the crimpier portion. And let's see, I think I have about 170 yards of each. And this is the portion where I kept the outer coat with it. And it's just given a tweedy sort of variation to the color here. And you can tell there which one. This one is the crimpy. This one has the, the double coat and a more downy undercoat. So the wool that went into this one, oh, there's some pink on it. The wool that went into this one um, was definitely downier and a little more challenging to spin um, without, you know, without the crimp. Basically, I feel like you need a little um, higher take up, get more twist into it without that crimp that sort of aids in the spinning. There you can tell the difference in color. No, no, just, just the crimpy. And this one has the undercoat, or the double coat. So about 300 yards. And uh, maybe it's a little bit, actually, no, 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 sorry. It's um, about 350 yards. I might, I don't know yet what I will do. <clears throat> but this is some other hand spun Shetland that I have. Basically, I got four color variations now. <coughs> Excuse me. And this was from a fleece from the Ross Farm, Money Penny. <laughs> Money Penny and Eloise. Yeah, it's just great stuff. So, Eloise still has quite a bit of lanolin, even after washing the skeins, and I love it. Have you guys seen the latest slow knitting on Netflix? It's I think it's Norwegian. And it's a sheep to shawl competition, basically. And they, they have a shearer come in and shear <clears throat> a Norwegian ewe who has to be the chillest sheep getting a haircut that I've ever seen. And I've seen a couple. Um, and then the spinners spin in the grease. And their hands, you know, they're under the studio lights. Their hands are just glistening with lanolin. Oh, all right. So I thought I would share... <clears throat> some of my Coopworth with you for a demonstration on tips. And let's see what time it is. Okay, goodness, it's getting late. Um, so 
So yeah, so here's some of my Coopworth Cross. And you can see the tips are a different color. They've got a bit of sun bleaching. So I wanted to show you what happens. And I have my a little color blending tool that I sometimes use as a flicker. It's not really technically a flicking brush, but um, so white tips. I'm just gonna open it up. There we go. Boom. The tips have not broken off. Here's the brush. The tips have not broken off. They have they really haven't changed the overall look of the color, have they? It's a different color than the butt end. This is the cut end of the lock. <clears throat> and I should say that I try to spin butt to tip if I'm keeping fibers aligned. I feel like, um, I'm not sure if that's technically the way to do it. I think you just need to be consistent with whatever way you do it. But I feel like, you know, when you pet an animal, you don't pet from... You pet from the growing end to the tip of their fur. If you pet the other way, I don't think it feels good, and it just smooshes like the nap of a velvet, you know, pushing it the wrong way. So I prefer to go from butt end to tip end when I'm spinning, if I'm keeping things aligned. So yeah, so you can tell like there's a difference in color at the tip, but it really isn't all that different. And then I wanted to show you something. My husband pulled out this hat that I made from my very first wool fleece. I got two skeins, two skeins of yarn out of this fleece before I just chucked it because actually, no, I gave it to someone um, who wanted something for students to play with, I think. Anyway, it's a good example of what not to buy. <laughs> and in this Rambouillet cross fleece, I don't know if you can tell. The tips broke off and I worked my butt off to get a decent skein out of this, but it's much more visible like in the bright sunlight. We were taking a walk and I was just tutting like that at his, at his hat. You know, it's usable yarn, but um, in the sunlight you can see where there's a lot of neps in this yarn from tips breaking off. I guess it could have been a lot worse, but <clears throat> yeah. And then you get a difference in color from here to here. Can you see that? Anyway, that was an example of a fleece that probably should have bypassed. I was just enamored with the chocolate color. <clears throat> And I didn't know what I was doing really, but you know, I got a hat out of it and I got a learning experience. This is the inside. So I guess my point is, you know, see if the tips crumble off, but ultimately don't be afraid of failure with wool or fleece because yeah, the, the sheep are always growing more and there's new types to discover. But in this case, you can see that the tips really just, the integrity of the lock was still there, even though the tips looked like they might be damaged. So yeah. All right, so, oh, there's one other, an acquisition, and this is a spoiler if you're in the Highland Handmaids Club. This came the other day. It's already on my wheel. Are you looking away if you want to? Okay, here it is. It's called Light Me Up. It's a merino bamboo nylon, and I'm spinning it for socks. So that'll be fun. I think I'll do a, a chain ply or another three ply. Not sure yet. <clears throat> Weaving. I have something on the loom now out of hands, uh, hand spun, um, like a wool silk blend, which I find is just delightful when it's woven. I also wove this. Hand spun remnants. It's not finished yet. I haven't done anything with the ends. Um, I think I'm going to fold this. So yeah, that's some ends that need to be woven in. But yeah, really, really fun. Um, part of the weft is a singles. And then a plump, plump merino that I spun. I, if I do say so myself, a really nice three-ply. 
and then the warp was a Romney dyed in two different colors by me. So yeah. I don't know, I might try sewing some bags out of my hand weaving. I think that would be a nice application <coughs> of it. So, um, two segments left and okay. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just talk to you a bit about the fiber town on the road, which will be the very last thing today. Um, Jessica, who is living in Spain, put together a, an adorable video and she talks about herself and her crafting and she talks about um, the town where she's living. She's teaching English in Spain. So I hope you guys enjoy the scenery. She's lovely. Um, she shows a little bit of the, the town where she's living. And yeah, if you are considering doing a fiber town on the road, let me know. I will send you um, details about how to do it. And yeah. So that is coming up. But before I do that, I just want to talk D-Stash. Okay. Um, as I said, the hand spun and the fleece spins are taking over. I have finite space for my yarn. I don't want to expand. I want to love the stash I have. And while I like a lot of this stuff, I'm ready for it to go somewhere else. Like I don't see using it in the foreseeable future. I may have had it for quite a while. Anyway, de-stashing. I'm just going to show, I'm not going to talk details on these, I'm just going to show a little bit. Um, and then you can go to, I'm going to put a thread up, thread up on the RAV group where you can go and find the details. Um, the prices will all be shipping included in the US and you can see what it's going to cost for it to go elsewhere. But I have a ton of stuff here you guys. Let me show you some of it. Um, okay. I have a lot of hand spun. I wanted to de stash. <clears throat> okay, so I have some Western Sky Knits, some Fin Wool, eight ounces, basket. I have three skeins, which would make a really nice fingering weight sweater, of LRA fingering weight. I've got and into the world bat. Really pretty. I think this is Falkland. I have some Shetland from Highland Handmaids. It's just a lovely blue, which is just not my colors, but I love it. And in fact, it would go really very nicely with this loop bump, which is Merino. This is called Organic. Here's the card. Um... <clears throat> Gorgeous worsted superwash merino dyed by myself. What else do I have? Some more hand spun. I don't think I'm gonna knit this. Yarn enabler, it's the pencil, top-down pencil sock kit. Highland Handmaids, fingering weight. <coughs> Excuse me. SSK, Turtle Pearl. This was the colorway they gave in the goodie bag. Um, I also have a lollipop yarn that I'm not going to knit. Comes with a heel and toes. I have some Madeleine Tash DK in what is composition but gray. I have that one. And then I have these two, which are already balled. One of them is a little short. I have Artist, a fingering weight. Let's see, Superwash Merino. Sock weight, yep, Superwash Merino. I have these three, which I was just holding together and thinking, oh my goodness, they look nice together. A chunky, this is a, a farm yarn that I dyed, and then this is a sari silk. I could always weave with these, in fact, they might make a nice woven object. I have a skein of Broker Remix that I'm not going to use for my sweater that I just finished. I have some Silky Wool, four skeins. I have two skeins of Lace Weight Jojo Land. Very pretty. 
I have this one, which was um, organically dyed, worsted weight, superwash merino. I have this, which is a wool acrylic single in a grad gradient. I have like, I think this is 2,500 yards of lace alpaca. And then I have some hand spuns. I have this one, which was a club mixed BFL. And then this, I would have to look up the yardage. I think it's around 600 plus. It's a mohair wool and nylon. This one, which is a Falkland, 420 yards, Julie spins. Really beautiful. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't part with that one. And then I have the last but not least, um, hand spun merino from that one that went out of business in California. <clears throat> the guy went back to Germany. Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, really beautiful stuff. So this will all be photographed. <laughs> it's going to be a work um, to get that photographed and up on Ravelry. But yeah, I'm destashing all of this. I'm making room and moving on from certain things. So if there's something you'd like, just um, make a note of it in the thread. First come, first serve. Yeah, so I hope you guys like Jessica. See a little bit of knitting in Spain. It's really wonderful. And um, yeah, I will see you guys next time. So take care. Hello, my name is Jessica. I'm Hodges00 on Ravelry and Hodges0015 on Instagram. And those are the two places you can find me most. I am the host of the new podcast, an audio podcast called Fiber Niche. And it's niche spelled K N I T C H E. And I'm here in Spain. I'm in one of my favorite gardens right now. I'm going to share a little bit of it with you. So I'm here by these, by these really pretty fountains and we'll see if this works because I'm worried it's going to be a little bit too noisy. And I don't normally do video and I'm trying to get used to this. Um, I have two works in progress with me right now. My first project is the Regina Marie Shawlette by Sarah Birch. And I'm currently working on the applied border. You work the applied border first, and then you knit the crescent shawl afterwards. And I am half a repeat from the end. And you can kind of see the lace pattern. It's got a leaf motif in it. And I just realized last night that I have been knitting these cables the wrong way the entire time. But no one else is going to know that besides you guys. Uh, this yarn is Licked Fodden Pure Silk Lace. It's 50 grams, 100% silk. I don't know if I'll be able to turn that around. And. This is a yarn company from Germany. I found it this summer and I am just loving the way this feels when I'm knitting it up. The other project I have with me is a sock. I'm making Wendy D. Johnson's Dead Simple Lace Socks from her Socks from the Toe Up book. And I'm making it out of the Sweet Georgia yarn in the smitten colorway. And this is bulletproof sock. And I don't remember the exact quantities. Oh, here's the tag. Sweet Georgia. The bulletproof sock is 50% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 15% kid mohair, and 15% silk. So an entire 50% of this yarn is out of materials that are gonna lay are out of materials that are going to extend the life of these socks. 
And this is the sock I'm working on. I have the lace pattern on the front here. And I just started doing, I turned the heel, and I just started doing the lace on the cuff on the back. And here's my finished sock without the ends woven in. Let's see if I can show that lace pattern a little bit better for you guys. Can you see that? So dead simple lace socks. It's great. It's a two, two row repeat and super easy. I had to modify it a bit to make it fit my 56 stitch sock um, for it to fit me. But I just did that by taking out some of the extra knit stitches in these knit panels. And I think it works pretty well. I knit all my socks on zeros and I these are chow goos and I love them I love all my chow goo needles and I am a DPN user and those are the two projects I have with me today since I'm currently here in Spain I'm in southeastern Spain so, I'm in a big city, it's one of the larger cities in Spain, and there's not a lot of tourism here, so I get to practice my Spanish a lot. Um, and while I'm here, I'm working for the year, it's my second year here, and I have been traveling a lot while I've been here in Murcia. And I have my travel notions case down to an art. I have this really small case and it has almost all the notions I'm gonna need when I'm traveling because I've been backpacking and you don't want to have a huge notions case with all the things with you. And I thought I'd show you some of the things I have in here. So first up, a little tape measure, inches and centimeters, and have two of these row counters. I could probably put one in my main notions kit and keep just one. I also have this DPN case. I'm sorry, tapestry needle case. And I've got my tapestry needles in here. And that doesn't take up much space and it keeps things from getting lost and this little string helps me find them. I also have four stitch markers, and these are some of my favorite stitch markers. They don't snag on anything, and they're very flexible, and so it works really well on um, just about all sizes of needles, and I just think they're really pretty. I also have nail clippers because airport security. These have dual function. I can cut all of my yarn if I need to. And also, if you have a fingernail emergency, you're set. Let's see, I've also got some kind of non-knitting things in here. I have three bobby pins, so I can put my hair up if I'm having a really bad hair day or if it's really windy where I'm traveling. And I have this little sewing kit with a needle. And this comes in handy. I've got some extra thread in case, you know, heaven forbid they take my needles or, you know, something comes up, there's a tear in something that I need to fix. I've got a little sewing kit with me. And all that fits in this little pouch that I have. There's some extra space too, so maybe I'll think of a few more things to bring with me next time. And I thought I would just spend a minute or two telling you about where I'm living. Oh, there's a kitty. Okay, so I said I'm living in Morphia. And let me know if I'm wrong, Emily, but it sounds like your in-laws live somewhere close by in one of the small towns in this region. And I had no idea. That's pretty fun. Murcia is 
a fairly large city for Spain. Most of it is not very, okay, this doesn't sound nice. Most of it's not very beautiful, but there are little gems all over the city if you're looking for them. And you can find little gardens like this, and they have these beautiful museums, and some buildings are just gorgeous. I'm going to include a few videos at the end, um, hoping to show you the cathedral, maybe the ayuntamiento that's here, that's the government building, and it's in a very popular plaza where people like to hang out and drink beers and have tapas. And I'm about 30 minutes away from the beach in the city. If I had a car. Since I don't have a car, it takes me an hour with public transportation. But that's not bad. I've had two beach days since I've been here this year. And I think that's about it for this time. I don't have any finished objects with me. It's really warm here in Morphia right now. I would say it's probably in the upper 70s. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in Celsius. I'm not good at Celsius yet, even though I've been here for a whole year. I do know that 30 degrees is 90 Fahrenheit. So I think it's 25? I'm not sure. But thanks for listening. Thank you, Emily, for, for hosting me today. And I hope you all have fun. Bye. This is the plaza of the Ayuntamiento, a government building. There's not many people here early in the morning, but in the afternoons and evenings, there's a lot of people sitting out at the restaurants enjoying their cervezas and tapas. This is the Cathedral of Murcia. It has the third tallest tower out of any cathedral in Spain, and I think it's the most beautiful building in Murcia.